Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. Today, I'm taking doilies and lace and these thrifted embroidery hoops to create wreath forms. Then we'll be using felt and satin to create beautiful flowers to adorn our wreaths. Well, there is lots of fun in store today, so let's get these projects started. Now you can make one of these floral hoop wreaths very, very simply by taking your embroidery hoop and simply wiring on some florals, and that would just be very, very simple and very, very beautiful. But I'll be doing that just a little differently. So I'm going to take my first hoop here and unscrew the top so I can get these apart. I'm going to be using my doily for the larger hoop over here, but for this one, I'm using this beautiful lace panel. I'm going to lay that lace over the top, bring this back over. I'm going to come up here and tighten this back up. And then we're going to turn it over and just trim off the excess. And we'll be using the felt to make flowers on this one. Unscrew this one and take this one apart. Lay out my doily. And bring this over. Nope, it's too thick. I'm not going to be able to get it in there. So. And screw this back together and go get some thread and we're going to stitch it on. Nice big thick heavy duty nylon thread here and then I'm going to take my little clips here and I'm just going to keep pulling and stretching and adding my clips and then once I've got everything stretched out and clipped on we'll come back and stitch the doily onto our little hoop here. And I know that I could use hot glue and glue this in, but I don't like to do things permanent like that. I like to reuse things. I like to take my crafts apart and do something else with them at a later time. Bring my needle through there, and I know it's hard to see, but that way it's not going to go anywhere. And I'm just going to put my needle through and just wrap it around but I'm just making little stitches just to be able to keep my doily in place. And I'm just going to continue stitching this all the way around, and then we'll come back and start making our flowers. And now both of my hoops are ready for us to make some pretty flowers. And these are just two styles that I had made in a previous video, and I will link those down below for you. But something like this on a smaller scale would be really cute on a wreath. But these are the two styles that we are going to be making for this wreath today. I'm going to be using this colorway instead. So we're going to start off with our little greenery pick here. Once I have used the flowers off of them, these make great pieces to be able to add embellishments and use in other projects. This one we're going to be making out of an olive green felt but you could also use a gorgeous purple to do this same technique and kind of make it look like a lavender stem. First, I'm going to cut a strip that is going to be two inches wide and also approximately nine inches long. Then you're going to want to fold your piece in half and you're going to glue these two pieces together very close to the edge. And now you've got a tube and on your folded edge here, you're going to make slits about a quarter inch apart and almost all the way down to your glue line, just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my little slits all the way down the length of my tube here. And now that we have all of those little slits cut in there, you're going to start at the top of your wire here and you're going to glue that first tab down and you're going to keep this at an angle as you continue to roll it and glue those pieces down and you only need a tiny little dot of glue 
So once you get started at the top, it looks like that. And then you're just going to keep rolling and gluing all the way down until you reach the end of your little felt piece here. And now we've got our little floral picks and because they're on the wires, they are adjustable. So that's gonna look really cute. To save time, I went ahead and cut out all the elements that I'm going to need. These are one and a half inch circles and I have 12 of these. And then both of these strips are one and a half inches wide and nine inches long. I used a pom-pom for the middle of this flower, but for this one, I'm going to be using a wood bead. Fold it in half and glue it close to the edge. And then on the folded side of our tube, we're gonna make those little slits all the way down, but this time we just wanna make them a little closer together. Just like this. Now this nine inch long section will make two to three flowers, depending on how large your middle section is. So you're going to take and glue this all the way around your bead. And I only want to wrap mine around once. And then I save this to make a different flower. Add some glue and press it down. So then that's the center of our flower so far. And for your pink strip, you can do it exactly the same way that you've done the gray, but I've actually changed my mind. I'm gonna do something a little different here, and I'm just gonna cut this in half. And now we're gonna take and just cut like fringe. We're cutting so very, very close together. And with our little fringe all cut here, we are going to glue this around as well, but you wanna come up just a little higher on the back there. So that's gonna stand up away from our little gray felt loops. And now once you get back around, you can make the decision if you want to just keep it like that, but I want to do another layer. So I'm gonna come up just a little higher than that one. So then that layer shows up too. So that's the center, and that's just cute even just the way it is. And now we're gonna take our circles, layering them as we go. And just overlapping and gluing those down. And again, depending on what you've used for the center of your flower, you're usually gonna use about five of those circle petals for your first layer. And then you just use all of your remaining circles to stagger those and create layers until you've used up all of your circles. And that next layer is just slightly higher than the last, so it peeks out from between the two. And then that's what it looks like. We've got all of our petals on there. And that's just gonna be so cute when we get it on our little embroidery hoop wreath. And for our next flower, we're using two inch and one and a half inch circles and I have five two inch circles and we're gonna have that beautiful pop of cream in the middle, but you could make all of them the same color if you chose to. So I have three one and a half inch circles and eight one and a half inch circles in the pale pink. And to begin this flower, you take one of your circles and you roll it then you fold it back on itself and we're going to glue that together. And you may need to squeeze that for another couple of seconds because sometimes it wants to pop apart. Now you're going to take another circle and you're going to fold it, but you're going to stagger the edges. So one is just slightly below the other one. And then that is going to be wrapped around the middle and that is going to form the center. Then you're gonna take your other cream colored circle and you're gonna fold it again, one edge just slightly below the other, and we're gonna glue that to the other side. And that's how we're gonna start the middle of our flower. And then you'll take three more of your one and a half inch circles 
and you're also going to fold and stagger those edges and then layer and glue that on and then you're going to do the same thing to your other two circles so that is the center of our little flower and now you're just going to use your one and a half inch pieces and they're going to be glued just as they are and staggered all around followed by your larger pieces that will then be placed around as well and there we go these are just so cute and that's just going to be so pretty when we get that all attached onto our little hoop i love that okay now we are ready to get our flowers put on you can go ahead and glue all of your items down but i know come fall i'm going to want to put some flannel and some pumpkins on this thing so i have made just a piece of cardstock here and then i take floral wire and just wire that on now i can glue all of my items directly to that piece of cardstock and when i'm ready to change up the design it all comes off easily with no hot glue residue so i like that placement right there and i'm going to go ahead and glue those on And clip this excess off and then I can glue that down right up underneath those little petals there and then I'm just gonna come over here and do the same thing on this side and I think that is super duper duper cute I'm gonna make a couple of little leaves with my green felt here so I'm just gonna cut some shapes just like that and glue right in here and then I can just start tucking in these little leaves to fill in all around there. And I think that's going to be really, really cute. And there we go. That is just so adorable. I love that. And these leaves ended up being two and a half inches long and one and a half inches wide. And I think they add just some more little fun detail in there. I just think that turned out so cute. So now we're gonna move on to our satin flowers that we will be placing on our doily wreath form. So this beauty right here is the next flower that we're going to be making. And I just love these. I have this bunch that I purchased from Amazon and that was actually the color inspiration for this flower here. And so now I'm going to show you how you can make one too. I just drew these little kidney bean shapes here. And you can see that I've written down the various sizes here. You can also go on Pinterest and look up fabric flower templates. And you can find so many different petal templates available there. And I already have mine cut out here. I'm going to be using this gorgeous kind of rosy gold color and I think that'll make it easier to see. So I'm just going to start stacking up my fabric and pinning on my pieces and you're going to cut out five of each one of your sizes here. And this is how I just fold over my fabric and then pin my pattern piece into place and then cut that out just as I've done these other ones right here. Now in order for this next step to work you need to make sure that your fabric is polyester or a high polyester content because we're going to be taking a lit candle and we're going to take our fabric pieces and we're going to hold them and I'm using some tweezers here so I don't burn myself but we're going to hold them over the flame until those edges start to singe and slightly curl just like that so you're going to take your pieces and you are going to singe all around the edges on all 25 of your pieces so when you start singeing your fabric that is a great time to put in a movie or listen to a podcast because this is going to take quite a while to finish all 25 pieces, but it is actually a fun and relaxing process. At least I think so. So we will be back to put our flower together 
once all of the edges have been singed. And I have all of my pieces singed here, but I am minus one because this little petal slipped out of my tweezers, dropped down into the candle and started burning. So always have a little bit of water nearby. So we're gonna start with our smallest petals. So you're just gonna take one of your petals and roll it. So that's how that is going to look. Now, as I was singeing mine, I had some of the fabric with the satin shiny side facing out, and some of them I did with the back side facing out. So you just decide if you want them all with the shiny side facing out or the matte side facing out, or like I'm gonna do with this one, a mixture of the two. I'm going to be using a heavy duty thread to stitch mine at the bottom together, but anywhere that I am stitching, you absolutely can use hot glue. I just always prefer to stitch mine. I am going to take one stitch up, and then down so this doesn't start unraveling. Then I'm going to turn it back where my knot is. I'm just gonna fold that over and then I'm gonna stitch it again. So then everything stays together. Then you'll take a petal and you just start stitching those in or you can also glue them. And now I'm going to roll this and leave this edge out grab another one of my petals and kind of overlap it just like that and i'm going to make a little stitch to hold that together there and i'm going to roll this over a little grab my other petal and i'm going to start pulling the center down a little bit so that these petals as we add them capturing that in the middle so it stays nice and even. So I'm gonna come up and catch that petal. And roll that just a little bit. So now you can see we've got the nice beginnings of the middle of our flower. Now we come to our next size and I'm going to layer that on where I left off. And you can see as we're building, look how beautiful that is. So I'm gonna catch this right here, coming up through my last petal and catching onto the new one. Then I'm gonna make another little stitch over here, up through the center, and come back down right here. And now we're gonna take another petal, kinda overlap that. And I'm gonna place that petal a little higher so as we keep adding petals and rolling this in, it just keeps stacking and building. And that is all you do. You just keep rolling and stitching or gluing until you have used all of your petals. And here is this one. Oh my goodness, I really, really love that color. And you can see just by tucking in and stitching on one of those little petals, one after the other, it just forms the most beautiful flower. I just love these. And each time you make them, no two are gonna be alike. And that's okay because no two flowers in your garden are alike. So I'm going to just enjoy the process of creating more of these beautiful little flowers and then I'll come back and see you again when it's time to get them attached to our wreath. So after I made this first flower here, I decided to take this whole thing in a different direction. So I made two smaller flowers in that same satin color and I used the first three petals instead of all five. So I didn't use the largest of the petals to make that smaller. And then I added strips of lace and cotton muslin and also some flower sack cloth. That way it kind of gave it 
a dream catcher appearance and I just really, really like how that turned out. So now all I need to do is give you a closer look at how cute all of this week's projects turned out. So much for joining me today it has been my pleasure to craft with you please subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations and until next time my sweet friends be blessed <music>